Namaste. Welcome back to Waking Up with Mindful Serenity Yoga. And I am going to continue answering questions from the jar. And I usually just pull out the question, go ahead and answer it in a 10 minute time frame. I, start, I pulled out one question, which was kind of a funny question, and I did want to answer it. And then I, for several different reasons, did not get a chance to complete it. So I would cheat today and answer that question within a 10 minute time frame. So I'm going to start my timer, take a deep breath like I usually do, and exhale. Now the question I got was kind of cute. They asked, the questioner asked if I was a new aged hippie, if I was a new age hippie. And I can see why they probably would ask that question, being the way I look with the long hair, <laughs> and sometimes with the clothes I'm wearing. I probably do look like a typical hippie from the 60s and 70s. And I am not much actually younger than someone of that subculture would be. <laughs> I am actually a few years shy, I think it was five years shy of the being in that generation of where the hippies so-called the so-called hippies reigned. So let's first of all, before I answer that question, look at what is meant by new age and what is meant by hippie. New age is a term we're probably all familiar with. And it's actually a term referring to a new way of approaching and understanding several things. Spirituality, yes. Mysticism, yes. Holism, yes. Um, and environmentalism yes as well as culturalism so it is a way of looking at and trying to understand uh, certain things in these areas uh, that kind of steer away from what we were traditionally taught to believe for example i think that's a good way of looking at it it's not traditional it's non-traditional way of viewing certain things Though spiritualism, which is a movement that came out in the 1920s, it originated big time. I think it came up even before then, um, but it was pretty big, say, in the 1920s in North America. Um, is all about, you know, spirits, the idea of going beyond the body and the mind to the invisible forms that exist around us and in us. It is still considered part of that New Age movement, for example. And, you know, we talk about the use of certain things like tarot cards and crystals and energy things and energy healing and and um, Reiki. A lot of these stuff, I have to say before I go any further, are based on some ancient truths and ancient wisdoms. They've just been taken into the Western culture and assimilated a little bit and twisted around a little bit maybe more so to meet the Western needs than where they originally came from in the East. So they do have a different twist to them. So we're seeing this uh, evolution of new ideations and new techniques and technologies used to help uh, us understand what life and what that is beyond life is all about. And that would be probably under the umbrella of New Age. I would also like to say that when we think of New Age, so traditionally, we're referring mostly on the spiritual mysticism paths when we are asked, you know, questions like, are you New Age? We're looking into those mystical things a lot of times when we refer to New Age, even though that's not what the term generally means. It tends to be our assumption about the New Age concept when we think of New Age. So when this person asked me this question, I think they're basically asking me, and again, this is an assumption because I don't know actually what the person meant. I'm just assuming they meant, is my spiritual approach new age in nature? To which I will answer, no, it is not. My approach, though I, I've i you know read into these things, you know, like the law of attraction would be considered new age. I've read into that. You know, I got even bought into it for a while. Um, you know, the use of rocks and crystals I do not use or but energy healing like Reiki and stuff I've looked into that because I was interested in Buddhism which it came from um, you know there's but I do not 
considered, I do not practice, nor do I teach, nor do I study in great deal these New Age movements. I am more interested in the ancient truths from which a lot of these stuff originated. I am more, in, more interested in understanding the scriptures, the original scriptures from where all these other texts and books and stuff were written from and these teachings came from. So I like to go back to the sutras, the Yoga Sutras of Pantajali, for example, or the Yoga or the sutras in Buddhism, and the, uh, you know, right back to the original Hindu texts, uh, like like the Gita, for example, and the Vedas and the Upanishads, and the. I like to understand yoga from the way it was first originally taught by the first yogis. I'm trying to remove the. So that I understand the original intention of these of these teachings, I'm trying to remove the what well, what the Western culture has done to them and trying to get to the original. So though the translations I read have to be in English, and of course because they're translated in English, they may may lose some of their, you know, original meaning. I I take that in consideration as well. It's hard for one culture to understand another culture. I don't propose to be any of these things that I'm teaching. I don't, I don't consider myself a Hindu, for example, though I find this great wisdom in the Hindu tradition. I don't propose to be a Buddhist. I don't, you know, the, the Buddhism is rich with tradition and lineage. And I understand the, the formality of that religion in a sense, and I'm not, you know, proposing to step in as a Westerner and say that I understand it all or that I am a Buddhist, because I'm not. I've never been uh, ordained, or not ordained, I meant to say initiated into any yogi type of thing. I've not been initiated by a guru, so in that sense I'm not not uh, a yogi in the traditional way. I am a yogi in my way, still again considering my Western ideation and my Western conditioning, but I am, I still consider myself a yogi, but I am more interested in getting to the roots of yoga and understanding that. Though I teach Hatha Yoga, for example, I'm very interested in the Pratipika and what that taught. Why was yoga started? Why were the Hatha movements in yoga started? So I look at that as just two limbs of the Raja Yoga proposed by Pantajali. So it's just a section of yoga. So what we do in the West, which is often termed New Age, is with these ancient traditions and this ancient wisdom can be utilized in a way that diminishes sometimes the value of the original teachings. And I don't want to do that. And I'm not saying that all, all New Age stuff does that, but I'm just saying I, I don't ascribe to New Ageism for that reason. I, I believe in the ancient wisdom, and I believe in the history of it all. And I like to go back and understand the original versions and the original teachings. I do the same with Christianity, okay? I do the same with Christianity and uh, understanding both the Old and the New Testament. Understanding that uh, great, great sections of these original texts have been removed for political and whatever reasons. So I, I understand that as well. So I, I just like to try to get as authentically as possible to the teach, as get to the authentic teachings as, as much as possible so that I understand the authentic meanings of these teachings. So no, I do not consider my new, the my uh, my approach to spirituality as new age, not at all. I suppose it's new age in the sense that I'm trying to incorporate all religions. I'm trying to get to the root, the connecting force in all religions that I study, both the east and the west. I do believe that all religion comes from one grounding uh, intention to understand the source of all life and to understand um, who we are. So. And that's also the source of philosophy, <laughs> so philosophers and poets and um, psychologists and scientists and everything. So I try to incorporate all different aspects of understanding into my approach of what others might deem as spirituality. So yeah, I'm not a new ager in that sense. I don't identify. I don't like to identify with anything either basically you know I don't like to call myself anything because as soon as you slap a label on oneself it's kind of limiting right I don't like labels too much so I if, if I had to choose a label I wouldn't choose new age 
Now, am I a hippie? Now, the word hippie, of course, is a word used to define a subculture of individuals who um, first arose in the mid '60s, early '70s, a lot, and you know, partially in reaction to the Vietnam War, but uh, you know, this this subculture wanting to break away from conformity, from tradition. Um, from that which they felt was holding them back and limiting them. So it was like for music, for example, we expanded from this very conformed idea of what was good music and what was mu evil music to a music that our, you know, the our parents or grandparents would have deemed as, oh my gosh, that's so bad, don't play that, don't listen to that. It's evil music, <laughs> you know, whatever, because it broke from tradition. And from the men wearing the short hair to the long hair and, you know, um, the different types of clothing that uh, people were suddenly wearing compared to what cultures or our tradition would have said was okay. So uh, I'm not a hippie in that sense. I, Even though my age would limit me by a few years, like I said, I could be in that generation, but I just missed it. I love the idea of being a hippie, being connected to the earth, being free spirit, peace is the number one thing for a hippie. Um, but the absence of any, I mean, they were very spiritual, though they didn't talk about spirituality in that sense, because they still, there was still that connection when a hippie generation arose with the idea of formalized religion, and they were steering from anything formalized and conventional, so they often didn't use the word spiritual, though they would, in essence, be, I suppose, very spiritual, be connecting to the self and the soul. I don't know if I answered that question correctly, but I guess that's my last attempt. My timer is obviously off. Let me see if I can turn that off. Sorry. <laughs> there. And I thank you again for joining me. Have a wonderful day. Namaste.